A legend Jones, a 17-year-old, lost her life after an incident at Youth Villages, the youth group home where she lived. Witnesses claim that a legend was brutally assaulted, battered, and choked before her transport to Methodist Germantown Hospital, where she died. Medical records indicate the 17-year-old's first diagnosis was compression of the brain and rhabdomyolysis, which is a rare condition that's often seen in people who've suffered major injuries or trauma. Youth Villages has videos showing what happened to a legend, but had not released it prior to today. Today, a press conference for a legend was held. Good afternoon. I'm attorney Ben Croft, along with attorney uh, Ernestine Doris, attorney Brandon Jackson, and a uh, great team of lawyers. We have the honor of representing the family of the legend Jones. We have present with us her parents, uh, Charlotte, Charlotte White. We have Jermaine White. We have her aunt, Dana Gardner. We have uh, many of the community supporters who have been with this family from the beginning and stood in prayer and solidarity with them as they uh, met with the district attorney representatives uh, from DA Marlowe's office as well as the uh, detectives uh, from the who are working on the case. Um, they shared with us like they did with Tyree Nichols being very transparent with the family which we can never say thank you to D.A. Morrow enough because it matters we're trying to have faith that equal justice works for our children too. Uh, we saw the video from Youth Village. We saw the video from the police body camera video at the health department. We saw the video from the dash cam. We saw the video for William Carter Kareem inside the police car uh, when she was in the police car, the back seat, our camera, rear camera, uh, and the police uh, body cam video had audio as well. So that was extremely uh, telling for not only what communications transpired, but it gave you a window into this teenager perspective. You got to hear a legend's voice and you got to hear of what her fears were. And it was so very telling. These videos paint a very disturbing picture, a very troubling picture, because it purports what other young people who were in the custody and care of youth villages had said that it was almost an us against them mentality that if you said anything about what happened in your village, they were going to teach you a lesson. And that became abundantly clear as we listened to the police audio uh, from the dash cam. It was very clear about the timeline. And that was very important. They, the, we're very appreciative to the prosecutors for really answering all the questions of the family. The fact 
that you hear the police when they get to youth village. Uh, yeah, so the timeline is very clear. She was taken to the health department initially to have a pelvic exam based on the fact that she had been sexually abused her mother as well as her therapist knew that would be a very difficult process for her to go have a pelvic exam after you've been sexually assaulted and so it was not completely surprising that a legend had apprehensions about a pelvic exam. And so you had female counselors there, and then you had male counselors show up. By the time the Memphis Police Department got to the health department, uh, Judge, I think they said it was six youth village counselors all together there. The 911 tape went out that there was an altercation between three adults. Uh, and then when the police got there, they saw her being restrained by two men. It's shown on the camera. They then leave the health department. department. She requests that the police transport her. She, she is adamant about not wanting to be transported by youth villagers, counselors. There's a little discourse about that. And the police say, just because she was not compliant with y'all don't mean she won't be compliant with us. And then you proceed to hear the officers talk to her very sensibly, and she is very compliant with them. She's in the back of the police car, and you hear her interact with the police. Um, she gives instructions on how to get to new villages. She talks about, you know, the fact that she is concerned. And, and that is very troubling. You can tell she is fearful about going to youth villages. The timeline is that Memphis Police Department arrives at the health department at 11.26. They leave the health department and they arrive at youth villages at 11.48. At 12.32, the EMS arrives at youth village. A legend has been unconscious for a few minutes by the time EMS arrives. This, I think, is the crux of the matter. The police officer tells the legend, we're not gonna put you in handcuffs, you know, we, and talks to her and makes her feel like they care about her. And you see how responsive she is to that communication with them. You get to Youth Village's campus. She asked the police, can you all take me inside? Youth Village's meets her, I mean, it was about 10 to 15 of them who meet the police car outside waiting on her with blue gloves on. 
as if they are preparing for a physical confrontation. And so she asked the police, can you escort me in? And the police agreed to escort her in. And they are walking her in. She is very compliant. You see this 17-year-old teenager walk in with them. When they get to the door, the youth villages official tells the police, this is as far as you can come. You don't have jurisdiction beyond these doors. And then the legend has to go in by herself with them. And whatever happens in the next 30 minutes leads to this young girl being dead. The video doesn't show exactly what happened after they initially put her in the headlock. But you know that it was not nonviolent, according to everything that the family viewed today. It seemed that like it was some force compliance that they they claim they is justifiable. But whatever they did led to 17-year-old alleged Jones' death. The family asks the prosecutors, will they be criminal charges? And the prosecutors told them they are looking at criminal charges, but the investigation is ongoing. But they understand the concern of the family, and they told them they were looking at criminal charges. When you look at the videos in this totality, it's, it's very disturbing why none of them tried to use less intrusive measures into dealing with a legend Jones, this 17-year-old black girl who was in their custody and in their care. And so it was very emotional at one point Miss Garner had to leave the room because it is hard when you see your child laying on the floor completely unconscious. And less than 30 minutes, may have been far less than that. They tried to, uh, you know, I don't want to speculate, it's less than 30 minutes that she was completely unconscious. And, you know, chest compressions, ammonia, tablets, that completely unconscious. And uh, we know that there are several things that the medical records are revealing you know, we talked about last time we met about the brain bleed and they are figuring out what caused that, but also the fact that you saw one of the counselors who was much heavier than her put a legend in a headlock. Um, and those things were very troubling. Uh, and we believe that it led to the death of this child in their care. We will continue to be as transparent as possible with the community because we won't let them sweep this under the rug. Right. We are searching for accountability from youth villages. We want the city leadership, Tammy, we want the state leadership, all the investigating agencies to help this family get accountability. All right. Or we want youth villages to step up and demonstrate true leadership for 
these children in their care. Because with leadership comes accountability. She was in your custody. She was in your care. What was done to her is blood on your hands. That's right. That's right. At this time, we will hear from uh, a great uh, lawyer, judge, human rights defender and Judge Ernestine Dorse. And then after that, you will hear briefly from Shauna Gardner, a legend's mother. And then we will try to take some of your questions. Judge Dorse. I've got to get by. Yeah. I've got to be in court. Yeah. There's not much left to be said, I think. I'm sure that Attorney Parker is giving you as much information as we can based on an incomplete picture. The picture that we've seen was substantial, but yet because the medical records and all information is not provided yet, it's incomplete to give us what we see and we think to be the case. And so the, the, the video is so telling and the timeline is so short and questions are yet unanswered because we really still don't know the cause of any escalation other than the fear of a child trying to walk or walk alone when we believe that the whistle, the dog whistle, was those blue gloves. I really believe that those blue gloves, before she left the hospital, the health department, there are people there from youth villages all in blue gloves. When she gets to youth village, there are at least six to eight people standing on the sidewalks leading to the doorway, all in blue gloves. If that is not an anticipatory dog whistle to someone that is always already filtered. And they already told her, we're gonna reach out and touch somebody. They said that at the help. And then they said something similar again once we got there, once she got to the villages. And so a legend death is her fear, but her fear should not have been her execution. That's right. Mm -hmm. We all have fears and levels of fear, but she should not be dead because of her fear. Thank you. Thank you very much, Judge Doris. At this time, you're going to give her more. Miss Shauna Gardner White, the mother. Y'all know who I am. Um, Patrick Walden, it's your facility. I hold you accountable because my child went there to get help. I watched the video of what I could, at least. She was compliant. We just had Christmas. My Christmas was not the same. All I could do was go in and out. I tried to be there for my kids. I tried to make a good Christmas. I bet you had a good Christmas with your kids. I'm missing one of mine. I didn't sign up for this. And y'all still not taking accountability for nothing. I just seen the video. There's no way you can't take accountability. A medical accident, she didn't slip and fall. She didn't have an asthma attack. Your staff members were there waiting on my child. A lot of them. It doesn't. It doesn't make sense that you can you enjoy your kids, but I have I have to bury one of them. It's not fair. Excuse me. And we're not gonna sweep this under the rug because I'm not gonna go away. I'm every if I gotta come down here every week, I'm gonna be down here every week until you take accountability. Don't don't forget Justice for a legend. 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 And my last thing I got to say, Patrick Law, is you think about my daughter, Rashita Nisiana, a legend Jones, this Christmas, like you thought about your kids. I'm missing mine. Thank you. Thank you so much, Miss Charlie.
Um, if you have any questions, we'll try to answer. I, I guess uh, a final timeline would be it was uh, verified what Ms. Garner told you last time that when she got to St. Francis at Germantown, the doctor had shared with them she was unconscious, they believed, Methodist, Methodist, that she was unconscious 45 minutes unresponsive at Youth Village. And then she was unconscious, unresponsive for another 25 minutes from Youth Village to St. Francis. And then she was unconscious, unresponsive for another 25 minutes from St. Francis to, to Methodist at, in Germantown. Yes. And so he opined that that was 90 to 95 minutes without her getting oxygen. And that there was, there was nothing they could likely do. They would do everything, but he didn't think there was anything he could do. And maybe, Ms. Garner, if you could tell him what the doctor told you, and if you want to use his direct, but just, you don't have to use his direct. Yeah, because he was, he was obviously emotional about this as well. What did he say to you and Jermaine, Sean? Well, he was explaining in big words to me what what he what he believed um happened i understood jermaine don't so he was like um your daughter was uh at youth village 45 minutes unresponsive then he was like from there to st francis another 25 minutes then he was like they they thought she was a dope but they figured out she was a child and so then they shipped her here and that was another 25 minutes unresponsive he was like two minutes and he's like after two minutes there's pretty much nothing you can do. And then he was like with a with the bleeding on the brain on top of it. So my husband, he got frustrated. He's like, he was like, I'm I don't understand all these big words. Can you tell me exactly what it is you said? So he popped his mask off. I'm not gonna cuss, say what you said, say the cuss word. And he was like, pretty much F it. Somebody basically choked your choke your child. Somebody basically choked your child. And that's what he said. Sure. And, and, and I was just horrified. Um, and I already knew he, I mean, I was psyching myself. There's nothing they could have did. Um, I just didn't want to pull the plug. Um, I wanted my sister to be here with me. Um, but at the end of the day, it should have never happened. That's and right. Patrick Lawler, I hold you accountable because this is your That's facility. Right. I That's right. That's right. I mean, right. you represent that you, y'all help at risk you. My child's an at risk you. Y'all couldn't have did it. Y'all should have sent her back. Um, she would be. She'll be 18 and 11 more months. I mean, nine more months. Now I have to go visit her on her 18th birthday in December. That's unacceptable. Justice right. for a legend. Justice, Justice for a legend. Justice for a legend. Justice for, for a legend. The, the hope is that the legacy of the legend will be that no more children will. Um, lose their life while in the care and custody of youth village. And and I know Miss Garner is adamant about trying to achieve that end. And when she talks to the leadership of youth village, she's talking to say, care about my child like you care about your child. What would you one, if this was your child, what would you be doing if it was your child? That's all she's asking. That's all she's asking. Um, do you have any questions? I wanted to clear up the timeline a little bit. So when did, um, so let's get the, the timeline. So when did EMS actually arrive at youth villages? 1232. 1232. And then as far as the counselors that were on site at the health department, so, cause I know we we're flipping a little bit with the male and the female. So 
six total, like clear that up a little bit. There were, there were two women, as we understand initially with her. And then they called, I guess, others and four additional ones came. And those were men or what? We don't know. We just know that when, what we see on the body cam video, when they got there, she was being restrained by two men. And y'all saw that on the video? Yes. And y'all didn't see like this chokehold thing? Like was that, did y'all see any of that on the video? That was at the youth village. <laughs> so, but all y'all saw on the video was just her being restrained by two men. Y'all didn't see this body no, cam? No, 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 no. It's different video. Body cam video and youth village video surveillance cam. On the body cam video, you saw her being restrained by two male counselors. And you build, you see how many, eight, ten counselors? Yeah, about 12, yeah. 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 All, you know, it, it's hard to explain, but they were doing some kind of compliance. They, they uh, communicate a report. And the one thing you do see is they're being restraint. They're being restraints when she walks in by herself. One counselor grabs her. Um, the other counselor has her on the left side. The counselor grabs her on the right side. She pulls away and flees at them. And then when she does that, they all go in on us. They grab her by the neck yep. and then take her to the corner and hard to see in the corner because there's so many bodies around us. what's actually being done to a legend. And then after a few minutes of that there, uh, I don't even know how much time elapsed. 27 minutes. But that's the whole time. But yeah. she's unconscious at some point before the 27 minutes yeah. because then they pull out and you see her completely lifeless. And they so tired where there, you see them taking turns. They got sweat dripping yeah. off of their shirts. Like they they like they wrestling with an animal or something. It, I mean that's that's poor Oh, I was about to say that the first video is body cam video MPD, and that is the beginning of the video saga because there was nothing prior to that that we've been able to discern or find out for. That's what they and so that started once the MPD was called to the free person fight. And, and that's a very important point. There is no video, there's a 911 call. Something happens where there's a 911 call between an altercation of three adults. And then when they get there, I guess they're told, oh, one of them is a child and there's two counselors trying to restrain the child. And this was yeah, this was apparently after she was supposed to be examined and removed clothes. And uh, she she um, had issues with that there as her mother explained why she thought she would have issues with that. Yes, ma'am. My main and only question, I'm gonna just keep it brief. Um, I know we're here at the DA's office, so you guys did just review the video with him. I guess the only question everyone is wondering is, when are you guys, or are they releasing this video for us to see? They told us when the criminal investigation is over, they will release the video. It's over. They said when it is over. And so because there's a lot of people involved in this, do we know how many people they're looking at as far as charges? No, they didn't go into any of that. Uh, any other questions? Did you speak to this Patrick Lawler since then? No, no. I haven't, I haven't spoken to anyone from uh, Youth Village except for when we went there um, last Thursday. And um, but I haven't spoken to Patrick Lawler. Um, Youth Village haven't reached out to me. They still ain't gave me all my baby stuff. When I went last Thursday, they found a pair of shoes. They, I'm still missing stuff. And they called the police, said we was a disturbance, which we wasn't. We me and brother Green were just asking about my baby stuff, and they we seen four police pull up. But then the police got when got in youth village when we was there, right. so they didn't stop them. Right. But when my daughter need protection with right. the police, they stopped. Yeah. And thirty minutes later, she's unresponsive. It don't make sense. It don't add up. And, and 
We're not opposed to meeting with you killers because it's tragic and it'll be even more tragic if we don't learn from this tragedy. If we don't accept accountability and try to turn a very painful situation into some sense of purpose right. to get to find the legacy of this 17 year old teenager, the legend Jones. Youth Village can work with the family to help define what her legacy will be. But it first starts with them taking accountability. That's right. And not trying to sweep it under the rug. That's right. And I have a question. Um, yes. The counselors who were involved, are they still working at the sure. villages or were they fired, suspended? They're still there. We just seen them. Yeah. One doctor took the fried chicken last Thursday. I just seen them. I, I was in the other um, in the lobby. And I was in the names that's on that, that list. I was hearing LaQuisha got some t- I'm talking about SDL. Yeah, they still there. Yeah. They was all coming. They was all like coming, like trying to get a look at me. Something because it was dead when me and Kareem first got there, and it's like once we showed up, that it's like people started using their badges, and then they fired the reception, they even let us in. So, if y'all ain't do nothing wrong, why y'all fired this lady just uh letting me and Kareem in trying to get my baby stuff, that's right? But that's what they did, they fired right. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to say they're telling the media very quickly remember my point to you all continues to be uh don't let youth villages run the narrative on here because they told y'all last week that they're working with a legend's mother and she's telling you that they're calling the police on them pat lawler and youth villages is saying that they're cooperating and she still hasn't received the legend's items so here's a mother and several other mothers who are telling you the true story but the media continues to report Pat Lawler and Youth Village's words as if they're the Bible, instead of trusting this black mother who we now know his daughter was killed within 30 minutes. Say it, Tim. Say it, Tim. And they not work on me. I ain't heard from nobody. You're right. But, um, the invitation remains open. Thank you all uh, for continuing to cover the story of Belinda Jones. And please continue to pray for her family through these Christmas holidays. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. Justice for Lydia.